Right, hello. Today I thought we'd have a look at the Tamiya Tiger 1 in 48 scale, which is more related to aircraft, but uh, Tamiya have a, a, a big range of this uh, armoured range in this scale, which is excellent. Now, Tamiya, I don't think you need any introduction. We know this kit's going to be well engineered and basically fall together. Tiger Tank, I don't think that needs any introduction either. Um, but this is the early production, so the early production's got different cupola, cupola, whatever you want to call it. Spared on the front, different air intakes and uh, bits and bobs like that, and it's it's faithfully replicated in this kit. We'll have a quick look inside. Um, I've already taken the uh, the parts out of the plastic packets. Like I said before, people rattling around with plastic packets is the most annoying on a video. I think life's too short to be watching that. Right, so we'll start off. Right, basically, we've got two colour schemes. The both of these in front. You got the uh, standard all yellow, or the yellow with the green and the brown. I'm going to go with that one. We're going to build that one and I'll show you how to do the camouflage. I'm going to try and build it as quickly and as simply as possible using as many, as minimum number of materials as possible to see what effect we can get on this uh, little kit. So that's that. The instructions are typical Tamiya, typical Tamiya, typical Tamiya. Nicely, nicely laid out, nice instructions. Again, I tell you what is good. We've got the bottom of the hole here and we've got some metal weights to keep the to give the, the model some sort of uh, gravity or some gravitas because it's a small kit so it's quite light. But we use metal weights but you slot them into plastic fitments which fit into the bottom of the hole so you're just using your plastic glue. No messing around with super glue. Perfect for kids. Uh, so we'll start off with the idler sprockets, the, the road wheels etc. Now I'm going to paint these on the sprue to see what they end up looking like. It's a, a technique I usually don't use. I usually try to build as much as possible and then build and paint from there. I'll try a different technique. Now, I want to try a different technique on this because obviously the tracks are handed either side on the Tiger and it actually comes with a jig. So we'll be able to basically build the tracks up off the kit and paint them separately and then put them all together, then weather it all together, weather it all in. Hole goes together. Yeah, I just know this is going to fall together. It's going to be such a quick build. You know, you got your exhaust, your 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 crew hatches, your air air filters on the back, bits and bobs, tone cables, you mould the track on the front, and your turret, and it all fits together lovely. We'll have a quick look at the parts. We'll just have a look at a few of them because you know what you're going to expect. See, this is what I mean by the quality from Tamiya. So, if you look at the spare track link which bolts to the front of the hull, they've moulded in the bracket that holds it all as all in one. But you can't really tell that's a sep that's not a separate part. And with some careful painting, washing and dry brushing, you know, it's good. you can accentuate the uh, the depth of that and then look like a separate part. I'll show you how to do that later on in the video. Um, air intake hoses, nice texture on them. Perfectly moulded, no flash, no sink marks. There's the bottom of the hole. So these little fitments go in there and the little metal uh, weights slot inside them and fit in there great engineering great thinking from tamiya again transfers yeah no problem top of the hole again the spade the axe is molded into the hole as is the jack and block and the wire cutters but they are a bit of careful painting you're not going to know like i say i'll demonstrate how to do that back deck nicely molded bit of texture in the cast bit there but like i say this is just going to fly together not going to be a problem. Again, look at the nice texture on the tone cables. Nice sand coloured plastic, nice to work with, nice texture, nice depth and hardness of the plastic. Again, the tracks, the horns aren't separately moulded, but you're never going to see that. Again, with careful painting, washing and highlighting, it's all going to come together lovely. Again, the road wheels, I'm going to paint, I'm going to build them and paint them on the sprue. Sorry, paint them on the sprue. Uh, it'd be easier to get the rubber uh, colour on. And there's the jig there for the tracks. So I'll be interested to see how that works out. But otherwise, that's the other one. We've got your poly caps. That'll be for your idlers and road, road wheels. And there's the metal weights stuck to the bottom of the box. And there they are. So they'll fit in that um, those slots and fit in the bottom of the hole. They're quite substantial. Then. I don't know if it's going to need all four. Never mind. Right, let's crack on. Now, if you follow me and your stuff, you might notice I do kind of build out of order. I don't usually follow the uh, the kit's instructions. So these are the weights I was on about. There's four of them that fit in the bottom of the hole. Now they're quite heavy. I'm actually only going to I'm going to go with two. 
I'll keep two for something else. That could be a nose weight on a 30 second scale B24 or something. But anyway, so they basically just slot into the, these little caps. Another one on there. Flat bottoms on them. Just drop them in there, get them lined up. Simple as that. Perfect time you're engineering. And a blob of glue on there. Don't have to be too uh, precious. Just get it in there. This is the Humbrol glue. Simple as that. Press it down a bit. And that'll be dry in a few minutes. Or half an hour at least. And I'll put the other one in. And then we'll start. I think I'll build the turret next. So there we go. That's them attached in there. I say I think two's more than enough for that. That's quite sufficient for the bottom of the hole. Now we'll move on to the turret. So I've cut off uh, B1, B2 and B13, which is these three items here. It's part of the mantlet. Uh, cut them off and clean them up. Now on the instructions, it tells you to put poly caps in. So I'll pop the poly caps in. Again, they just pop in, fit perfectly. Right, so we'll glue this together. Uh, so orientate the mantlet so you've got your two vision ports there. So that's off centre by that much. So that pops in that way, get it the right way Neil. So that pops in that way, give that a little drop of glue. Bit of time your extra thin, thin cement, run it around the outside. That's now locked in. Now the next thing is to pop it into here. So where the poly caps are, so it'll make it uh, um, elevate the gun. Well, I'll probably just glue it straight down so it doesn't move. There we go. That just pops in like that. A little bit of Tamiya glue on there as well. And that should secure that. Push it in a little bit more, make sure it's nice and secure. Okay. Now, we've got the, tur the turret halves, which are still on the, the main sprue. I just wanted to point out, again... Tamiya's thinking when they construct things like this. So the sprue attachment points, there's one there that's like on the back of the turret basket and there's one there that's like underneath the turret. So even if you cut them up and make a right mess of it, you're never going to see them. So that's that's Tamiya thinking about the modeler. So I'll just clip them off with my Tamiya uh, snips. And underneath there and there well there's one at the back as well missed them ones so there we've got that so we just need to clean up the attachment so that's my scalpel and number three swan morton with the number 11 blade on brand new one in just pop the new blade in so be careful nice and sharp and i know you're not supposed to cut towards you but it's the best way I get control. That's that trimmed off. See them on this side. Nice and easy. Nice plastic to work with. And just on this one as well. Same again on this one. Trim the bottom of that off. Trim the bottom of that off. And back of the turret bin. Or the turret bin mountain point and it fits together really nicely ah that's a perfect fit and we'll pop that in make sure we get it the right way around they just push into the poly caps in that side and pop it in that side perfect and that's lined up absolutely 100% so what I'll do, a bit of Tamiya extra thin cement, just make sure that's nicely lined up. Drop on there, drop on there, bit on there, bit on there. And a bit on the front, just make sure it's lined up and we'll let that dry for a little bit. Then we'll put the turret roof on. I say we'll just make sure it's lined up while it's still a bit wet. That looks spot on, really does. I like I say, this thing's just going to fall together. Right, let's move so on. Yeah, we'll have the turret sides glued together. And even with my best efforts, it's still... Uh, <laughs> Elevate up and down. Right, so next is the turret roof, which I've already trimmed from the sprue. 
and it just pops on like that. What a perfect fit. A uh, bit of tammy extra thin cement around the outside. Put a drop there, drop there, and a drop there. Might put a little bit more on that just to run it around. And pop it, get a little bit of pressure. And we'll let that dry. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to crack on with the rest of the kit. Like I say, it'll pretty much fall together. Uh, when I find something interesting, I'll stop and we'll film it again. I'll probably, when we get to the tracks, I'll film that and how the uh, the jig works. But apart from that, I'll basically just throw it together and we'll see where we end up. All right, so here we go. I've got it built up as much as I want to before I start priming it and painting it. Uh, as you'd expect, no problems whatsoever uh, building up. Well, there, there was a problem. I'll get to that in a second. But otherwise, it's a nice fit. Those little weights in it give it a nice, a nice weighty feel to it. Um, yeah, actually, I said the tracks were handed. I don't know what I was thinking. They're not handed on the tiger. They just obviously go a different direction. So scrub that last comment that I made. Now, I usually build the model up as much as I can and paint from there. But today, I'm going to try a different technique of painting stuff on the sprue, such as the road wheels and the tracks. Um, now, obviously, to fit the road wheels and tracks, I've left the, uh, the side skirts off. I'll leave them off until they're built, so I've got access into there and the rear mud guards. So for now... We'll give it a coat of primer, which is going to be this. Again, my go-to primer from Amazon. It's the same make that uh, Halfads have, but it's just branded in a different way. So this is just standard grey primer. Uh, it goes on really well, nice and smooth, no issues. Just, just if you if you get this, just practice on a on a model first. You just have to give it a bit of distance, a few dust coats. Then a then a, a nice uh, coverage will ensue. Right, I'll do that now, and I'll come straight back. Right, to I've you. got primed what I want to get primed there, so nice and smooth, nice and dry. So I've done everything I'm going to do uh, in the yellow colour. I'm going to choose Tamiya XF60 dark yellow. It's not quite close enough, but it's good enough for what I want to do. So I'll get some of that, thin it down with some AK uh, thinners. That'll do the job. We'll fire up the Quattro. I mean, fire up the compressor. Uh, break out the eye water and we'll get some colour on. Okay, right, so we've roughly got a 50-50% mix of the cup there. Let's pick a target and let's get some colour on it. So let's just start with the turret. And you can gauge when you're spraying whether you're happy with that. It looks a little bit thick to me, so I'm going to put a little bit more thinners in and we'll come back to it and I'll get all coloured in. But as you can see, just double check when you're spraying. Like I say, it looks a bit grainy. So I'll get a little bit more thinners in. And then I'll, uh, let's get all coloured in. We'll come back. Right, I'm a bit happy with that consistency. So we'll try again. Try on this side. That looks much better. That looks much better. It goes on much nicer. So I'm spraying at about 30, well, probably about 25 PSI. Compressor kicking in, so basically, you just don't want it to get it to pool. Nice, even uh, coverage like that. Right, I'll crack on and finish it, and we'll come back. Right, let's have a little uh, update on the uh, the tiger. So it's got its um, dark yellow color on. Went on, no problem. Tamiya paint, brilliant. Airbrushed on, no problem. Now I've put the road wheels on. Now I've done a, a black wash on the rubber. Uh, tires which hasn't worked out very well in fact it looks pretty rubbish now I'll show you how to, we're going to pull that back with some weathering uh, more dry brushing and um, more washers so at the minute it looks pretty rank but like I say we can recover that so if you ever make a mistake or some things on your model don't look right don't worry about it you, you can recover it and you can even incorporate mistakes into the model if you want to but so far so good nice uh, dark yellow on that we're going to go for the uh, the green and the brown swirl pattern on it. Now, I believe, now I'm no expert, but I believe um, Germans were issued with the tanks in dark yellow and they were given the, the red, the reddish brown and the green as a paste and they applied it themselves, either by brush or by spray gun, uh, thinned it down with all sorts, I think petrol or even water. So it's not going to be a high class finish on these models, uh, sorry, on the real thing. So what I'm going to do on this, I'm going to airbrush the stripes on um, and then I'm going to go back over it with a lighter yellow and sort of fade it a bit 
to give it an appearance of like an in the field application. Now, what, what also is going to happen when you try and continue the stripe up the side of the tank across the body and up the turret, you're going to get overspray around the turret. So when you do that and you take the turret off, you will see like a ring around there of overspray from the green and brown. So that's when we're going to go in with the, the light and yellow and bring it back together and fade it. And then we'll start the weathering process. So we'll we'll get to that process shortly. As for the tracks, I have done these off the uh, off the model, which is unusual for me. Like I say, I always like to build straight on the model and then as much as I can, and then um, then go from there. So what I've painted these tracks, I've gone with some Citadel lead belcher, just thinned it with water and basically just slapped it on. That's the sort of effect you get. Then I've gone over it with again Citadel. Now this is called Null from Jesus Null Oil N U L N which is a weird name, but I think it's all like Games Workshop stuff. So I'll just give you a quick idea of what happens with that. So I've brushed it on there, and you see it's gone into the recesses. It's actually very, very good stuff. So I'll just bang a bit on to show you what it looks like. Get some on the brush. So we'll just do that one there. Get a bit more on the brush. Just load it up, go for it. And you see how it goes in the recesses? It's excellent stuff, it really is. And it settles in the recesses nicely. Now what I'm going to do, obviously I'll paint all these. Then I'm going to fit them to the tank. But what I'm going to do, I'll just dab in the black where I've missed. I might give them a little dab over with some thin black paint. Uh, then I'll put the tracks on. Then we'll do a bit weathering on the bottom. And then we'll try and get the striped effect on. And we'll try and tie it all together. So um, I'll crack on and do the rest of these tracks. And then we'll uh, we'll go from there. Right, as you can see, I've cracked on with it a bit and I've put the tracks on on the right-hand side with the mud guards. As per the instructions, I didn't bother using the jig. I, you don't need to. You can just follow the line of the uh, the road wheels. So that's that side done. I've put the mud guards on with super glue because I want to have them quite robust. Now, excuse the voice. I'm actually full of cold at the minute, but we need to crack on. So the lovely fitting tracks, uh, link in length. There's no problem with them. So I'll quickly show you how I did it by showing you on this side. I've basically left the idler wheel, uh, sorry, the drive sprocket loose. Well, it's fitted on the poly cap, so there's movement. So it makes it easier to put your tracks on there, the individual links. Now there's 10 per side. Now obviously the tracks point the other way. They turn the other way so that the, the wider bits on the outside. So we'll just pop that in there. Okay. Now I'm going to put a bit of glue on there. Now as you can see it's already painted. It doesn't seem to matter so just put a little bit on there on there just to hold it in position. And then we'll put the next one on. It doesn't matter if I flop about a bit because we're going to sort that out. So we'll get the next one on. The glue's basically there, they're just to pin it in place at the minute. And I'll get another one on. And then we'll have a look. So basically we've got three on there, and then we'll try and we'll try and line them up so they look like they're sitting naturally under weight. It, it honestly it is much easier. I'm making the right mess of this, but it is much easier than I'm than I'm showing you here. Get rid of that one. Let's put that in again. Right, well, so we'll do two because the other one's disappeared. But basically that's all you do. And then you can get the the uh, the radius right just by putting a bit of glue, like I say, a little bit of glue on the uh, on the plastic part with the paint on. It doesn't really matter so much because you're not going to see them. There's the other one gone. Try and get this one on and show you. There we go. That's better. Put it under the guide horns, right? So let's nip that in. down a bit more so as we go along we can make sure they're nice they're sitting nice and level and they look like they're uh, they're under tension so i'll work around them and what actually what you've done once you've done that you've got seven or eight on there you've got the link with a little bit of a length with a little bit of link on so we can fit that in and then basically all you do you just rotate the drive sprocket around 
and just get it to match up and it'll you'll get a visual look of when you're happy with it and then you can just glue it all down together so i'll crack on and finish that obviously it's going to be much easier without the, my phone in the way so i can see what i'm doing but basically if you get it right you get that sort of effect and if you put just a little bit of glue on just to tack them in place then you've got a little bit of time to get some adjustment and you get them sitting really nice okay i'll crack on with the other side just a quick update on doing the on doing the links on uh on the uh the tiger <coughs> the easiest way is to put the cut out bits there on top of the uh of the slot there so you've got the cut out bit and the other link there uh it took a while for us to work it out but like i say my head is banging so put a bit of glue on there get this one there uh, much better look how easy that is and then you can check the alignment so once you've got enough on i'll turn the uh the sprocket and get it lined up with the other link in length right as you can see i've got the other uh, side track on um yeah it, it did go on pretty easy i made a bit of a meal of it before but it, <laughs> they do actually go on quite easily um yeah you can't get it right all the time right <coughs> so what i'm going to do now i'm going to go for the squiggly camouflage pattern i've just dug these out i'm going to do the green and the reddish brown with ravel colors 84 and 363 so we'll use them for the squiggly pattern now what i'm going to do i'll airbrush the squiggly pattern on but once i get um you're going to get a bit of overspray between the turret and the hole so once i've got them on i'll take the turret off and i'll spray the uh the bits that are missing because obviously if i spray it and you turn the turret the, the, the line will cut out there uh i am probably on the real tanks that's how it works but i'd, I'd want to try to get a bit neater on the uh, on the model of the tank um now i think the german crew were given the reds uh, sorry the browns and the greens as like a paste <coughs> and they thinned it down and um airbrushed them on the, uh, the tank itself so that's why there's many very different patterns of uh, of camouflage but we're going to go with the squiggly colors with those um the squiggly pattern with those two colors then i'm going to come back with the yellow and fade in and cut in and um give it that sort of um slightly worn slightly used appearance and get rid of the overspray there will be overspray between the turret and the hull and try and blend it in a bit and get a little bit more of a faded effect on the yellow and we'll sort of tie it all together it looks a bit bland at the minute then we'll get some weathering on it some dry brushing some detail paint work more dry brush and more washes um, and we'll obviously get the transfers on as well and we'll try and sort out this uh, the mess on the, the tires as well on the rubber tires but otherwise um let's fire up the uh, compressor all right so there's my mixture of green it's a little bit grainy it's not the best but um we'll see how it goes on <laughs> Press it off right, let's have a go. See if we can get this in the camera. See if I carry the stripe up onto the turret, we'll get some over spray when I remove the turret. Right, so I'm going to continue doing that. We'll get all the stripes on, and then we'll put a bit of brown on. Then I'll take the turret off, and you'll see what I mean. And I'll, I'll get some yellow on there, and um, we'll knock it back and fill in the gaps. Right, so that's the basic camouflage on the green and the brown. I'm reasonably happy with that. It's okay. But what I want to do now is knock it back a little bit. The yellow in particular. And I'll explain what I mean by like the sort of overspray on the turret. So we need to kind of get rid of all these this overspray between the green and the uh, brown. So I have mixed up some more dark yellow from Tamiya with a smidgen bit of white just to give a little faded colour. I'm just going to try and blend it in a bit. So let's see what we've got and I'll see what I can demonstrate. Just to kind of see how it fills. Oh, let's see if we see that on the camera. So kind of fill in and get rid of that overspray bit there. Just basically neaten it up a bit. Fade it in a little bit. See what I'm doing there? Getting rid of that overspray. I'm just cutting it in a bit there because I didn't like that. Green was a bit thick. Again, get rid of that overspray on the brown. And I'll just go around the whole tank and we'll clean it up. Right, there we go. So we've knocked it back a bit. 
<coughs> sorry, filled in the um, the the shaded areas, which were uh, sorry, getting rid of the overspray on the turret ring, so that's all gone. I know in real life it would still it would be there, but you know it makes us feel better the way it is. So that's I've got a I've got some black on the the barrel the muzzle brake. I sound like Lindy Beige. So on the muzzle brake and on the exhaust area, a bit of I've airbrushed a bit of black on that, but you know that'll all get calmed down again. So that's where we're at. Yeah, I'm reasonably happy with it. And um, we'll get the transfers on next. And um, we'll start doing a bit of weathering, and that's when the fun really starts. And then we'll pick out the additional detail and we'll sort out these uh, these wheels, which look pretty ugly. So I think we'll get on with uh, we'll get on with the, the transfers now. Then, right, it's now time to put the transfers on. There's only five in the kit uh, for this particular mark, and the three whole numbers and two uh, two crosses. Uh, as you see on the turret bin there and on the side, they've got a nice little gloss coat on. This is what I use for that. Just basically brush paint it on, let it dry. Excellent stuff that. It's good enough for what you want for this uh, this type of model. So there's the transfer coming off its back and paper. Nice and easy. And I just pop it in the middle there. To get my knife and just line it up a bit. To basically do it by eye. There we go. And I just basically get a brush. Just roll over it to get the air bubbles out from underneath. We'll see what it's like when it's dry, whether it needs any transfer enhancer. Um, but otherwise, that's that, and I'll get the other five on. Right, so that's the transfers on. They've gone on perfectly well. No problem with them. So it's basically just the crosses and the three uh, hole numbers. Now, I'm going to give it um, a little coat of some dust. I'm going to go with the Ravel 82, Matt 82. It's a nice earthy colour. So I'm going to airbrush around some components, which will pick up a bit of dust, like around the mudguards mudguard area around the wheels just on the outskirts a bit again on the mudguards uh, around the back where it's going to pull up the dust as it's driving along so a bit more on the back here a little bit on the back deck but I'm not going to go I'm not going to go, go too mad with the um, the weathering because it does state it's the uh, number 233 is what we're doing as the second company 503rd heavy panzer battalion Russia August 1943 so we're looking sort of a summer sort of um, scheme. I think it's very dry and dusty. So we don't want to go mad with uh, with weather and like covering it with mud. And I don't really want to obliterate the uh, the stripes that I've got on it. So we'll have a go with that. Stay tuned. Right, that's the result we end up with. Uh, I'll zoom in as close as I can. So basically just going around the edges. It's much easier to airbrush with the camera out of your face. But as you can see where I've gone, so I've gone in amongst the gaps there, around the edge of the mud guard, around the edge of the wheels, where the dust would basically settle while the tank's on the move, around the back deck where it would pull it up a bit, and a bit more on the back there itself. So it's quite subtle, there's not a lot there, but it will make a difference when the rest of the weathering's on. And I've gone just quickly around the back of the, uh, the tour as well, obviously when the gun fires it kicks up a lot of dust. So that's basically what I've gone for. A subtle effect, not too heavy. Then we need to start getting on with the wash and the dry brush and, and the detail paint work. Right, as you can see, we're making a lot of progress on the uh, on the tag at the minute. <coughs> You'll notice I've got the um, tow cables on. I've, I've put them on. I've just given them a, a basic um, blocking color of like a, like a, a metallic grey. I've blocked in the Pioneer tools and etc. and bits like that. So now we're going to go for the wash. Um, so I made me custom me custom wash of uh, oil paints, like a browny blacky sludge. So put a bit on the brush and we'll just show you what I do. So just into the recesses, let the capillary action take over. And we'll start getting some definition into the recesses. See if I can just get a bit closer on that one. So if you see like the hub there, put a bit on there. You see how it picks out the wheel nuts, the hub nuts. And sits in the recess so go all around the tank just picking out it's quite a thin wash this i've got going at the minute uh, but you can see on that wheel how it's like picking out the recesses giving some definition giving the model some depth so i'll go all around the model with that then what i'll do i'll give it a, a slight dry brush with some oil paints again then i'll settle down with um 
a coat of matte varnish and then we'll go in maybe with a slightly thicker wash more more uh, targeted wash and because you see sometimes I don't know if you can see what happens there it sort of like pools a little bit just pick it up with a brush get rid of it and you can see it's already picking out the definition so I'll go around the whole model and we'll see what it looks like when I've done that but we're getting there with this one right we are pretty much near the end of the build what I'm going to do I'm going to give the, um, the tank a dry brush I'm going to show you how to do that then I'm going to give it a coat of matte varnish I'm going to do some detailed um, more precise uh, washes on it do a bit more uh, work on the uh, the store on the uh, pioneer equipment and the cables put a bit of chips and bits and bobs on it put some highlights on the tracks but I'll do that off camera I'll just once I've done that I'll come back and show you how I've done it I'm really struggling at the minute with my voice with this god awful cold so we're going to give it a dry brush this is what I use buff titanium De La Rowley oil paint really good so you can see how much I've worked off the brush there so there's very hardly any left on the brush so it's a number eight brush now I'll go across the uh, the road wheels and you should see the highlights come up quite easily yeah can you see what's happening there just picking up the details bolt heads uh, the wheel rim giving it a bit of depth oh sorry giving the, giving it a bit of a highlight and um and the, the depth becomes more pronounced with the, the darker colors again just catching the edges you can see it's picking up the uh, the nuts holding the uh, the fenders on and there we go just give it a bit more dry brush right i'll go over the whole tank the tank um, I'll give it a coat of matte varnish, I'll do some more detailed paint work, we'll come back and uh, I'll do a conclusion on it but uh, we're not far off from finishing it now but I'm quite pleased with them wheels now and there we go, the Tiger is finished um, additional work I've done while you've been away is let's get something to point with I've done a little bit extra work on the tow cables and the um, Pioneer tools i put an aerial on as well I've highlighted the track so we've got a bit of metal scuffing on the uh, on the tracks themselves um bit, a bit on the barrel muzzle brake yeah me a bit on there to make it a bit uh, um sooty with a bit of uh, a bit of silver marking on there like it's been cleaned out um <coughs> otherwise i think it's quite uh, it's turned out okay there's loads of things you can do with these kits these uh, 48 scale kits from tamia they're really really good there's, I was going to do with this one, put some edge brass mesh uh, on the air intakes at the back, on the grills I should say. Or I think Valinden do a drop in a resin engine as well for it. <coughs> Sorry. But uh, that's probably as far as I want to go with this one. This is purely straight out of the box. Uh, I'll put some images up of it at the end of the video and also put a few images up of the other kits that I've done. Such as the, um, the Churchill Crocodile, the Sherman Firefly. The um, Humber Scout car and the Daimler Dingo, but otherwise that's that for that. That's the Tiger one done. Um, let us know what you think in the comments. Um, some if I've gone wrong somewhere or done something right, or you want some uh, instructions on how I've done things a bit more, just give us a shout and I'll try and help. Or I'll just try and incorporate it into the next uh, video. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Um, enjoy the pictures and thank you, thank you again.